Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I think people are still coming in. Um, so I just appreciate if everybody would uh, mute their mics as they come in. Um, the only people who should have their mics on uh, would be our two panelists here today, Jyoti and uh, Mohammed Mansoor, uh, Jyoti Maraj. So I would think that um, the conversation would be just uh, between myself and them two. And of course, if we have time later, then we can have some questions from the, the students themselves. But the session was designed for to be about 45 minutes. Um, I hope my panelists don't mind if we go slightly over, uh, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes over, um, if need be. But we're going to try and keep it to about 45 minutes uh, in terms of what you're trying to cover today. I think the topics we're, going to, we're trying to cover today are going to be very important in terms of um, exam preparation for both third year and PGDA students. The invite went out to both uh, PGDA and third year students. Um, the session, of course, is recorded and we're going to put it up and learn later on for students to view as well if they didn't have a chance to view the session uh, today. So firstly, I'm going to give my um, thanks to everybody for coming in today and, and being part of the session. Uh, the second thing I'd like to do is just basically thank our panelists, uh, Jyoti Maraj and, and Mohamed Mansoor. Uh, real big thank you to you out in industry um, to come out here and, and come and speak to us uh, during this time. Um, so I'm going to introduce uh, both our panelists uh, before we start uh, the process. Uh, my first uh, panelist, I mean, I'll introduce you to is Jyoti. Um, she is an uh, ex UKZN alumni student, uh, summa cum laude uh, graduate. So done very well and also in, in the ITC top 10. Um, she went to Deloitte afterwards and then also in first strand in treasury and now also in SA home loans uh, as well, uh, working in the finance section there. So she's done very well for herself. And of course, uh, she's always keen to help us um, Jyoti, really thank you for, for being here today uh, and hopefully you can add value to, to our students' lives. Uh, the second panelist I interviewed to today is Mahmoud Mansoor and Mahmoud also a cum laude graduate um, at UKZN alumni, went straight into Standard Bank. Uh, Mahmoud being slightly younger, uh, is still finishing up his articles, but he has finished, um, I think his ITC and APC um, and he's got some very, very good experience in the corporate side uh, with Standard Bank in Joburg. Um, so thank you to our, uh, both panelists for being here today. Jyoti, I'm not, uh, Jyoti and Mahmoud, I'm not sure if you can check if your mics are working. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, Mahmoud. How's it, guys? Can you hear me? Great, Mahmoud. Great, I can hear you as well. Fantastic. Okay, so um, guys, uh, welcome to the session. Uh, I've just got a few questions. I've got, I've, I did a drill of questions in the morning, uh, probably about 12 or 13 questions. I'm not sure if I'm going to get through all of them, but hopefully um, these questions are some of the, the, I think, the burning issues that students want to know about. Uh, my first question to, and both of you can answer uh, at any time uh, if you want, um, is your daily routine. I think students have a tough life, um, you know, on, on campus, uh, some of them off campus as well. As a student, uh, and I know I'm, I'm going to be jogging your memory going backwards here, but how can you remember what your, what your daily routine was like as a student and how you spent your time uh, specifically every day um, during both the weekdays and the weekend? Uh, Jyoti first, then maybe moment. So I remember life being rough. <laughs> um, it was definitely rough. And um, by the time I got into third year and PGDA, I had already developed a routine from first and second year where, and obviously we're all different people. So everyone needs to come to a conclusion on what works best for them. If they're a night owl or if they're um, an early bird, figure out what works best for you. So I used to get up at like three to four every morning, crunch thin when I was really fresh. And then it would be going for lectures and classes during the day and even tutoring when I was in final year. Then when I did come back and so at the end of the day, I would be really tired, but I still needed to push a bit more obviously because when you're in final year, for example, the syllabus ends so early. It's um, it's not a, you don't have the whole year. You don't have till November, October to finish course content. So I would, for example, that would be when I would do my summaries or my reading where I didn't really need to apply a lot of mental focus, but where I was just trying to absorb and just absorb the content. So that would be my evening work and then get to bed early so that I'm able to push again the next morning. Um, yeah, and also, like, I think the importance of exercise, meditation, sleep, 
it can't, you can't get through the year without that. So I had, um, like, I used to use these meditation apps. So, and a lot of them are free, like Calm or Headspace, whatever it takes to reduce your anxiety and help you focus. Um, that's really important. And sleep. So I didn't get eight hours, to be honest. I used to get like six, six on weekdays and I'd catch up then on the weekend with eight or nine. Hours. I'm, I'm guessing you're sleeping at around nine or like quarter past nine and waking up at three. Is that, that the type of schedule you're looking yeah, at? Yeah, that's the kind of schedule I used to keep. Roughly. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Jyoti. Uh, Mohammed, on your side? Yeah, I think um, my side was very similar. Um, like, I'm very religious and stuff. So in the morning, I get up and pray um, like 4, 4 a.m. Um, and once I get up in the morning, get some breakfast, go out for a run, um, or something similar, come back and then, yeah, bang it out for, for that morning. Um, I was very different and I don't know, don't, people don't do, everyone don't do this, but I was more of a hybrid kind of student where I preferred self-study a lot uh, versus lecture. So the night before, if I knew I covered the content of whatever was going to happen the next day, if I was fairly comfortable with it, then I wouldn't go for that lecture the next day. Um, and I would work right until the tutorial at like one o'clock or something. Um, so I'd essentially wake up at like 4 a.m., um, pray, run, come back, breakfast, um, start working, actual work, like proper, proper solid work from like 6 a.m. to around 12, uh, 12 p.m. Then I'd drive to the university, get the tutorial done at one-ish. Um, after that, go back home. And then I would also push, have, have a proper, proper session. Um, I do miss the power naps. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't, I never really took too many of them, but um, you know, um, sometimes when you're really, really tired and was a really, really crazy tutorial session where we covered like a lot of content, then I would take like maybe a 35, 40 minute nap, um, start again, and I would push right until say 11, 12 o'clock-ish um, on like a really heavy day if it was a really, really big topic that I wanted to cover, like say group accounting or if I want to do a lot on leases, uh, for example. Um, so that's what I would normally do on during the weekdays. On the weekends, it was, I, I, I didn't, I didn't struct, I structured my, essentially I worked on a timetable basis. So I knew exactly what I was going to do that afternoon, that day. Um, I think it, it makes it a lot easier than having to come home at the end of the day. And then you're like, oh goodness, what do I do? There's so much going on. If you have a timetable set out and it's all in order and all, all structured, then by the time you get to your work, there's no like, you know, worrying about what, what I'm going to do and all that stuff. And it just takes away the unnecessary stress that there's so much going on um, if it's more structured. I get to the weekend and whatever I couldn't cover during the week, it wasn't a train smash. I would actually just do it over the weekend so that at the end of the week, on Sunday night, before I slept, I ensured that whatever we, whatever work was covered during the week, I would have it completed. Um, so that I don't have like a backlog going into the next week. And I found that very helpful, especially when it came towards test time, um, when you have six to seven sections to do, you don't want to be doing two or three sections per module, like two weeks before. That's ridiculous. And you're destined for, for, for bad news if, if you do that, um, to put it frankly. So that's essentially what, what my, my week looked like. And, and again, I, I worked like that on blocks and it was more of per test time if you know what i mean like if it was test week one then i'd work like a crazy animal from the beginning around till the test week then the week after i take it slightly easy because again it's a marathon it's not a it's not a, it's not a sprint and you want to make sure that you're ready for the final exam because it's it's crazy but some people have done kind of badly in tests but they've passed the main exam because they were they were ready to push in that last final month or two uh, which is very important i think so yeah, that's essentially what what it was like for me and um, what my week basically looked like um, every week. Yeah. For so moment, yeah, moment, if I get this right, your, your sleeping pattern was like such that you'd sleep like 12 midnight or something and then wake up at four. Is that that pretty much it? Like four hours of yeah. sleep every day? Well, wow, okay. Essentially, then, I was yeah. able to function with four hours and I'm able to do that. Like, again, you have to do yeah. what works best for you. Like even today yeah. at work mm -hmm. when I'm working and stuff, I still sleep yeah. four or five hours. I don't get more than seven mm -hmm. hours, even on a weekend because I my body automatically wakes up after six, you know, like it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't let me sleep long. So yeah. I felt that yeah. exactly, that's how it is mm -hmm. for me. So if yeah. you have to find what works best for you, I think. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So thanks uh, for that moment. My next question would go, go along. I know uh, Jyoti spoke a little bit about this, the, the, the stress management side um, and how we manage stress, because I know um, PG, PGDA in particular is a particularly demanding year and ITC with work is also demanding. Um, how would we go about um, almost on a daily basis trying to, trying to manage our stress levels? Um, and then maybe I can ask uh, Jyoti first and Mohammed um, for the response on that. So again, it's something very personal, but I do think um, the kind of stress which you go through in PGDA is something that you've never gone through in your life before. So you have to make it, it's, it's you're gonna have to look at techniques and research what's gonna work best for you. And what I did used to do, um, so I would, um, so, if anybody has ever used the Calm app, you can basically do like calming body meditations and stuff. And I needed that because when I had anxiety, I could never focus. So in order for me to actually get something done and even before an exam, for example, I would not be the one out there having a conversation, laughing, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not the time. So it's all about getting into the right headspace. And I don't know if you guys like watch sports movies and stuff, but like the greatest athletes of all time, they all have their routines and what gets them into the, the right zone. So as a person, you need to decide what that is. Is it music? Is it meditation? Do you need to have um, like a really strict exercise routine in order for you to get to that level of focus and to prevent you from building up stress? It's that. And also, I think the importance of diet. So I think we all know how we feel when it's like we're binging on junk food and stuff. So it's like really like this year of bringing all these different lifestyle factors and taking them into account so that you can be at your best, because that's really what you need for GDA. Um, yeah. And also keeping, um, I wouldn't necessarily say a study group, but having a circle of friends within PGDA does make a huge difference. It's nice to have that support structure when you're going through something. You just want to chat to someone and see what they're trying to do. If someone else is doing really well, speak to them and ask them what they're doing that's different. Just to consider whether you need to reassess how you're going through the year. And um, that makes a huge difference. And also family support. I was very lucky to have that, but I do know that sometimes you don't, not everybody has that, which is where I think it's okay to go to your tutors, to go to your lecturers. And like, I, I didn't mind doing that for my, when I was a tutor for being there for students, when they, for example, were going through tests. And even when I was in my first year of articles where my old um, students in my TAT class would speak to me and be like, this is my first test. I totally flunked out. Um, so reach out to people and you'll be amazed at how much support there is for you. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Thanks, Jyoti. Uh, Mahmoud, on your side, how would you manage the stress uh, situation? Yeah, for me, it was more of, I was quite hard on myself. Like I told myself, what happens at the end is a function of how hard I work. Um, so if I was stressed out towards the end, it's because maybe I didn't do a particular section that well, or I left it towards the end. Um, and again, your success is determined on how hard you work. Uh, you can't blame other people. You can't, you, it's, that's just the way it is. And I take it more in terms of that approach where, you know, it is what it is and you have to, you have to get through it. Um, yes, it does get difficult. And, and GDA is going to be very, very stressful for the 30 students and the GDA students. I'm sure you know how, how crazy it gets. Um, it may seem overwhelming and yeah, you may get anxiety and I'm not going to say I didn't, um, things were hectic and you know, when you're getting marks that are coming back and not, you're not used to it, um, because coming from third year, you're smashing it at the ballpark and then you're getting in GDA and you're like, oh my goodness, I, I don't know the section as well as I thought I, I did. But when that happens, you know, it's okay to make mistakes, but don't make them twice. Um, so learn from them, make your mistakes in your tests or whatever, but go back, get your memos, understand where you went wrong. And that's what, that's how I coped with, 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 with stress. And, you know, I got better at what I was getting wrong. Um, don't do the things that, that you know how to do because you know how to do it. So why waste time on that? Rather than doing that, go on and, and build confidence. Uh, and I felt that 
as I worked throughout the year and I got more confidence in, in the topics that I was, I was basically learning every week, I felt better. And by feeling better, automatically, the level of stress that you're dealing with, it reduces dramatically. Um, again, everybody's different. Um, so you've got to get up in the morning and you've got to tell yourself you can do it firstly. And that's, you're going to have that self-motivation. No one's going to give it to you. Um, and no one's gonna, no one's gonna, no one's gonna force you to pass. You have to force yourself to pass, um, and that's how I, I viewed it throughout the year. That no matter what happens, if I worked hard and did everything I was supposed to do and more, then I'm gonna pass in the end. And that kept me going, kept me motivated every single day to say I'm gonna do it and it's gonna be all right in the end. And whenever I felt stressed, and I, I basically went to the core of why I was feeling stressed um, and why I was having anxiety or whatever, and if it was a particular topic or whatever, then I'd go and speak to my tutors. Um, I speak to my mates first. Maybe they know it better than me. Um, if they couldn't help, I'd speak to my tutor. If the tutor couldn't help, I'd speak to the lecturer. If the lecturer couldn't help, I'd have a consult session um, and sit with the lecturer for like one or two hours and go over, over the particular section. And then afterwards, I'd feel better, you know, on the weekend, work on it, get better at the topic. And then by the time the test came, I had a certain level of confidence where you could say this is how this is where I'm this is where I expect to be. And when I get my mark back, yes, I, I achieved that because I did everything that I was supposed to do to get to that position. Again, it, it, like it was mentioned earlier, I was I was the type of person who, who before a test or exam, I would actually go and have a chat to every single person. Uh, I felt that calmed me down uh, before before the test or exam. And, uh, it took it took my mind off what what I had to what was going to happen in the next say 20 30 minutes but before that in the morning of the test I would sit in the library and have my headphones on and I would smash through every section quickly quick revision and then I knew okay cool I know what's happening I understand everything and I'm going to go in the test and I'm going to smash it um, and that's just how it was so that's the best way to deal with anxiety and stress in my opinion and again everyone's different but you got to find what works for you um and yeah, yeah. if you still no, have problems talk to family you know yeah thanks thanks, thanks Mohammed. i know i'm always interested in how people deal with stress because uh when i was doing my pgda i, I definitely remember uh one of my best friends was the number one person in the class in terms of perform performance and uh she used to go to the beach um one day before the the test <laughs> and just stay in the beach for about what six or seven hours i wonder how is that possible when you're writing a test the next day uh, to be on the beach and even the final exam. So I was wondering whether there's a commonality existing among some very good people, but it doesn't seem to be that way. Um, but definitely um, everybody has their own way of dealing with it. So it's quite interesting. Um, the other thing that uh, um, I want to ask today um, from, from you guys, from both of you, is uh, more specific on examination technique. And, um, you know, every, every student has their own way of answering papers. Um, some students um, usually answer the questions they know first. Some questions, this just blindly go into every question as it is. Uh, some students go to the most difficult question first. What was your approach uh, when you're dealing with certain subjects um, in answering questions? Did you, you should identify the ones that you know first and do that first and then go to the next ones? Or was it, you know what, every, every uh, question has an equal mark allocation and time management is so I will spend equal time on each um, question as it stands. Maybe Mama, do you wanna go first and then Jyoti? For sure. Um, for me, it was, uh, again, um, the second I read the required, um, well, as soon as the required comes out, I work out the, the time mark allocation. So I know how much I, sh I should spend. That's the, the minimum time or the maximum time that I should spend on, on each question. Um, overall technique would be the second that time runs out. I have a little stopwatch next to me. And the second I, I pass that time, um, it's, it's, it's done. I need to move on to the next question. Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble later on for another topic. Um, then for basically approaching each question, I'd look at the easiest question first, like what I know that like, I'm going to smash this out. Um, again, it's all about confidence. The more confident you become in, in, you know, in answering as you go along, um, I don't know, automatically it just feels like towards the end, if it's a difficult question, your mind just feels like, Hey, I can do this. Um, and you actually get into a position where you can answer it. You may not get everything right, but You'll be getting you'll be getting something to ensure that you pass the paper overall. Um, that was essentially the main approach. Um, if I got stuck with something, and if I knew that you know again, exam technique is important. Where like you could, if you put a random figure in there and get a method mark and move on, I would do that. Um, and that's if I'm like that's a last resort. Like when I when I was really really, I knew that I'm not going to get the answer to this question, but I avoided that at all times. 
uh, that's like the last, last resort that you, you should take. But again, don't get stuck on a question and waste 10 minutes trying to figure it out if you know you can do the next question better. Um, and particularly in accounting, for example, um, you know, the technique there is like for, 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 for theory questions or those, those long discussion questions. And lots of people in our class in our years struggle with it. And again, it goes down to the basics. Put down the basics first, understand what is required um, you know, in that question and then build on the basics and then get to the intricacies to get you that, that, that big mark that you, that you, that you desire. You know? And essentially it's the same across all modules. Um, start with the easy stuff first. And once you, once you get going, then you know, yeah, I can, I can do this. And it's that confidence factor and then you're good to go. Thanks, Mohamed. Uh, Jyoti, from your side. So I think I was similar to Mohammed in that I did also start with the easy stuff first. It never made sense to go into a question where you knew you were going to struggle. So you would rather spend that minimum time allocation on the easy questions. And then if you do have time remaining, then spend that extra time with a more difficult, challenging question. Um, so overall, when I went into any test or exam, I used to have like a plan. So from what I remember, you, a long time ago, you used to get like the information, but you wouldn't get the question. And when you're in ITC, you get the information, but you don't know if you're sitting in the accounting or the tax question, because you get the required after your reading time. So um, have a plan in place when you're getting ready for tests and exams now. So I used to have like a color code. So if I would read something and I thought this was, hey, going to be like a Companies Act auditing question, or this is going to be a CIP, um, yeah, professional conduct question, or this was going to be a clear income tax kind of question, or this was an accounting question, but I could see there were possible um, income tax implications. I would have like my eight highlighters and I would start marking that down on my massive case study or whatever it was. And it just gets you thinking so that when that comes out in a required you're not like a deer in the headlights think, thinking about it for the first time only because you've already started thinking about it and planning before you've even gotten to that quest, that stage at the end. So you want to be actively reading basically during your reading time, not just passively um, reading, but not thinking about the consequential impact on like what you're going to need to answer. So that's very important. Um, and time management, obviously. Don't don't sit on single questions, struggling, trying to get 100% on the one really difficult question, but miss out on all the easy marks, which are always there. Oh, thanks. Thanks for that. I mean, um, definitely the, the approach taken by both Mohammed and Jyoti correspond to, to something I'm passionate about, neuroscience, uh, where we, we look at brain, brain cognition over a period of time. And what we found is that, you know, the brain is, can only perform at a certain level um, at a specific period of time. It shuts down to lower levels and then comes back up again if you give it a break. And as students, you know, we're fighting a losing battle, uh, anybody uh, for that matter, because our brain cognition can only keep a certain level of, of state of awareness at a specific period of time. And as the question becomes harder, and as you go in, your brain ability actually gets compromised over a period of time. Uh, so you can't do the same level of concentration after four hours, for example, after the first hour. Um, so you can't keep that level of concentration all the time. Uh, so it makes perfect sense, I mean, to do the, the easy questions first, maximize on that, and then the more difficult questions later on when your capacity is not as strong um, as it was in the first one in terms of maximizing marks. So it's 100%. I actually uh, fully agree with that, and I know a lot of people agree with that as well. Um, my next question is basically, I think what Jyoti alluded to was about planning. And I know um, I can see as a marker, uh, definitely for, for a number of years um, at PGDA and even master's level, and even look at reviewed PhDs, um, when we look at people's attempts um, as to how they want to get to the solution, uh, the planning that goes into it uh, is almost self-evident when you look at the answer in certain instances. Um, so I think we always encourage our students to plan um, their solutions before going in and, and attacking the solution or attacking the question rather. Um, my question is in terms of, of your time, I mean, how much of time would you spend planning your answer you know, before actually executing on the answer itself. I know, you, uh, Jyoti, you spoke about something very interesting, important about preempting your answer when you're looking at the, the question paper, looking at those little you know, indicators or words there that can preempt us to, to the right place 
so we know what we're heading for. Um, and that's part of the planning process as well. But how much of time do you think would you spend? I mean, say in a 40 mark, uh, 60 minute question, just getting through the planning your, your answer out. Maybe Jyoti, then Mohammed. So I think planning isn't something that actually takes too long when you've been practicing all year. And generally, like if it's a consol like an hour long consolidation question, it's not going to be something you've never seen before. Yes, there will be things which you have to think about, but it's never going to be, I mean, we what we train on and what we practice on is kind of what we're um, lecturers feel they need to train us on to be prepared for an exam. So planning isn't something that takes long. I would think five minutes of planning is more than enough even for an hour question. And the reason being that just five minutes of planning will put you in the right direction. So just not jumping in is very important because like, I remember once doing a question where they gave you all the information for deferred tax, but the consolidation question told you to ignore deferred tax. And I hadn't planned that time. So I had done the whole question with deferred tax. And then towards the end, I went back and read the question and it was like, oh no, why did I do this? I made my life difficult for no reason. So even that, like just a minute of thinking, what are the requirements? What must I do? That would have stopped that whole train smash. So. It's not something that takes long because we already have a lot of practice. So even five minutes of planning makes a world of difference. Jyoti, before I go into moment, um, can you tell us about your planning process? Because I know I remember, I remember marking your solutions, and they're always more or less in line with the with the suggested solution. But um, what was the thinking process when you were actually planning itself? Like, say, for example, a tax question, a capital, for example, capital allowances or a PPI, a sixteen question. Um, what was your process? Would you draw a flow diagram? Would you just think about the requires and jot down points? Or how would you go about actually planning? So when I used to do my TUTs, I actually used to look at the type of questions that came out. And my summaries weren't just summaries of what's in the act. My summary used to be, if it's, um, say, for example, an estate duty question, these are the kind of considerations that go into a question like that these are the kind of factors which you put into that. And I used to have like headings and stuff. And I remember doing the same for like math. Um, you know, when they have like those financial factors, like non qualitative factors, for example, to consider in an evaluation question. I used to have that structure in place. So that's also again, what um, is something you should consider before you enter an exam, the concept of active learning. So you're, already considering now the type of factors that you're going to plan for when you're in looking at that type of question in a test. So yeah, it's just having those structures in place before you enter the exam room that makes a huge difference. So it's almost like a mental checklist that you have in your head yes. and achieving it yes. uh, at that point in yes. time when you're, when you're planning. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Mohammed, on your side? Yeah, for me, um, I would, I would, as soon as I get the required and when I'm trying to answer the question, I take the required and put it next to wherever that piece of information is going to come from. So I'd underline the main parts that I need to answer and make sure I stick to it. I'd see whatever, if it's an ignore deferred tax, for example, I'd be like, cool, ignore deferred tax, put a big highlight over the thing. So I know, ignore it um, and go on from there. Again, I wouldn't spend too much time on planning. I spend say three, four minutes maximum just to understand the flow of my, my answer. Um, again, you may have done it something similar before. I mean, it, again, it comes with practice and the more you practice, the more questions you'll see and the more things will look very familiar and, and come naturally to you. Um, so that, that was essentially how I went along with the answer. Um, I get my presentation done properly because those are easy marks to come out with, um, you know, like, you know, writing down balance sheet for the year N30, whatever, whatever. Um, etc. Put the lines in, you know, get the structure of the question in. If it's a if it's a technical question, if it's a discussion question, I'd plan my answer out from you know the introduction, the body, conclusion, making sure my points are in the correct places, um, etc. And also, I was very careful not to waffle and say the same thing three or four times in different language, um, because that's going to waste time, and get you no know, marks. Um, so, simply put, you have to have a structure when answering every question. When you're studying, go with tutorials. Um, go over the practice questions, do IDC papers, past papers, etc. And you'll eventually become very familiar 
uh, with, with, with how you should answer um, a particular question. And that's, that was basically my approach um, when, when answering. Thanks. Uh, the next question I have is not as exam specific as the previous ones, uh, but it's just about the day, the night before the, the exam or the night before the test. And I know different students have different approaches with this. Like I told you about my, my friend um, who was um, uh, a top student, but also just relaxed the previous day and, you know, didn't want to, to clog too much information the night before. And some students who are good actually do uh, go ahead and study till 12 o'clock or midnight or two o'clock and then write you know, at eight o'clock or nine o'clock the next day. But what, what was your approach the night before um, it actually happened? The test happened or the exam happened? Uh, Jyoti and then Mohammed. Um, so I think I had a different approach through the year, depending on whether it was test time, exam time, or ITC. So when you are at test time, you're obviously, you've just covered the work. You've, you're looking at a cert like maybe four or five weeks at a time. So I would still be working until the last day, but I wouldn't be cramming. So I would maybe, for example, have one three hour question to attempt, and then maybe spend the rest of the day consolidating everything I've done, looking at the questions I've done in the previous weeks, and just getting myself in that mindset where I remember where I've gone wrong, how I'm not gonna make those mistakes in the test. So I would get my full eight hours of sleep on that day. And I think that differed when it came to the exam time, because when you're at exam time, you've already had like, I think we get that month or something just to study. So I think probably that whole last day and even the same before ITC, that last day was really about just relaxing because you've really pounded your head at this point. Um, so it's, it's, it's also about getting yourself in the right frame of mind. And also when you are getting ready for the final exam, there's a lot more content for you to go over and review. So in your last two weeks, for example, you should say, I'm going to do this question, this question, this question, um, this ITC exam. And I feel like these are the questions which I need to practice. And at the same time, have your, have a, um, plan which summaries you're going to review, which sections you're going to review. So that it's it's very different, I think, compared to whether you're writing a test or exam. Yeah. I didn't go to the beach though. <laughs> on the it wasn't, uh, I didn't guess you would. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mohammed, on your side, the night before, the day before? Yeah. Um, for me, the day before was was pretty, pretty chilled. Um, like I would go over everything, like, you know, quick reviewing Whatever, whatever I needed to do for the next day, just say it was writing accounting and I think tax on the same day. I'd go over, go over it quickly for like say two, three, four hours. Um, after that, I would, I would chill, like legit chill, like watch TV, get some series done, or uh, run outside, come back, um, just chill. But that was towards like GDA, in the middle of the year. When I was in third year, it was very different. When I would work till like three a.m. and write at eight because I wanted to get every single thing done. Um, again, it was not healthy and, and you shouldn't be doing that at the last minute because again, you need rest. Um, and that's what I understood as I went along, uh, through my GDA, year. um, as it went closer to the end of the exams, I started doing less than the day before. And even in the ITC and the APC that we recently wrote this year or last year, um, I was the day before I literally just printed my work and, and sat down and just, you know, took everything in the day before. Um, you don't want to clog your brain. You don't want to look at a brand new question or a brand new thing that you've never done before because it's just going to stress you out and it's going to make you blank. Um, so the best thing is get all your prep done well in advance. So two weeks before, get everything done. So then the day before, you're not scrambling and, and, and you know, in, in, in a position that you don't want to be in. Um, so essentially, yeah, that was, my, that was my approach the day before. Thanks. Thanks, Mohamed. Um, we just have one question from... Um... The students um, advice on summaries for topics. How would you do that, and how long would it be? Any any advice you have for students on that, uh, Jyoti? Then maybe Mohammed. Um, I think so. From what I know, just like friends and stuff doing, I think people put too much unnecessary information in summaries. So, for example, don't summarize the income tax acts. It's right there. You should rather focus on what are the different 
conditions, for example, in a so like gross income? What are the different factors that you need to think about? What are the different types of case law that's affecting you? That's what should be, those little bullet points are what should be your summary. It's not um, summarizing every, well, actually you do need to know your case law. That is an important summary. Um, so it's considering the subject and what needs to be done. So you're not gonna summarize IFRS 9. You're rather gonna consider what are the different aspects in IFRS 9 that I need to be aware of. And that goes in your summary. And you can speedily, you know exactly where to refer to when it happens because you've already been, I mean, when it comes to test or exam time, you've been practicing questions so many times and so often that you don't need to know something off by heart, but you know exactly where to look and you know exactly where a certain example or reference is going to be. So to an extent, summaries is important, but don't let that take away time from your question time and honing your skills for the exam. Mohamed, any advice on, on summaries? Yeah, um, for me, summaries are very different. Like I didn't summarize a topic or anything like that. I, I had lecture slides as, as essentially a summary of the topic. But for me, what I wrote down were the things that I got wrong um, because that's essentially where I need to improve. Um, and that's how I did every, every topic, every module um, throughout the year because um, if you already know what, if you know the things that you're good at, then you don't need to, to summarize. I mean, that's how I felt. I didn't need to summarize it and, and, and go over it and in, 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 in waste time on a summary on it. Um, I only did the things that I was weak at um, because that would be a quick way to get me to remember the things that I didn't know and things that I needed to work on a lot, well, a lot more and, and get better at. So that was my approach approach to it. And yeah, it's not a it's not a science. It's just a quick things of what you don't understand. You know the main things. You don't have to spend hours doing four pages or five, six, seven pages of of a topic in your textbook. The, the words are on the book. You don't need to read and transcribe it on a piece of paper and and say you did some work. It's wasting time. Um, it's all there. And the key thing is just understanding. And if you have understanding, then things become a lot easier. Yeah, hundred percent. I have one more question uh, just on this um students are talking about a rest day was there ever a rest day for you or would you take a rest day uh, any particular time during the week or before a test or after the test uh maybe um, moment first what year yeah um i think for me it was again like i mentioned before it would be after the test week i take a day off um, like a complete day off but I would take that week slightly easier and then i get back to it um like this, literally right after um again you're gonna have the whole of December to, to, to party, to have fun, you know? And then you're gonna be, you're gonna prep for ITC in Jan. So it's one of those things where you gotta make the sacrifice. And if you're willing to do that, then, then yeah. I think Mama is stuck with us, give him a few seconds. Okay, so I think Mama's connection has been uh, severed somehow. So, Jyoti, I'm not sure if you're gonna come in on rest days. Did you have any rest days when you were? So during my the week, I did I did take Sunday afternoons off. So Sunday at around two, mm -hmm. I would not do anything. It was my favorite part of the week because when you've just been drumming yourself day in day out, um, yeah, and obviously taking it a bit easier after tests and exams but knowing when to draw the line and jump back into it. Like GDA is just, it's one year and it's one short year. So yeah. you have to make the best of it. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm just checking if Mohamed is back. Um, Mohamed, are you there? Can you hear us? Mohamed, can you hear us? 
sorry, my laptop died. Joining my, yeah, no, no, on my phone. No, it's sorry. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. You can get it in where you where you left off. I think. Um, just um, in terms of rest days. In, in terms of sorry, um, your rest days. Um, oh, your rest days. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, it's it's not. You don't have to. You don't. You're not forced to to take a rest day, but you should. Um, I think it's more of getting back into into you know understanding that you know, I've worked really really hard over the last two weeks three weeks or four weeks um, getting ready for that particular exam or test and then afterwards let me relax unwind get back to to where I was um, and then start again um, like I said you're gonna get time to to rest after the year um, and that's just how you should you should approach it. Um, you don't want to repeat, and, and it's not that it's wrong to repeat if you tried hard and if you've done everything you could to to make it through the year. But at the same time, you should you should have the focus of saying, "Hey, I'm going to work really hard." So come in the year, that's when I'll take my break. Um, because yeah, we, we all want to pass, right? So that's essentially yeah. the goal. Hundred percent. While you're there, Mohammed, I've said one more question from a student. When should when should you plan summaries? That's the question. Um, any of you want to uh, take a shot at that? Um, I would say that for me, again, the way I did my summaries was just things that I got really wrong. Um, it would be after my tutorial. So after the tutorial I'd go for, I would identify the areas of weakness. Um, I'd sit in the library and just revise the section. And then when I'm revising the section again to understand, you know, re-understand the issues that I've been going through for that particular section, that's when I'll dot things down um, and how to do a particular calculation, if it may be, or uh, maybe answer a question in a different way or a different, a different manner. Um, I think one thing that was very helpful for me was that when, when I was practicing my, for my tests and exams, I would do lots of questions and have like a question bank, and that's what I'd call it, where I'd take the most difficult question that I've ever encountered in that, that prep period, and I'd stick it in, in this little fold on my laptop. Then... When it came to, to the year-end exam, I'd pull up that, that little question bank. And because I you know, counted those little questions from each topic as the most difficult I'd ever seen in my life, and I'd pick one discussion, one proper technical uh, question for each topic, um, I would go over all of that. And that's how you know, I'd be prepared for, uh, for the exam on each question or each topic. Um, that I go because again you don't have time in the last month in the say it's September October to go over the entire syllabus again um, this again it's an ongoing process where you're learning all the time um, and come year end you just want to you know make sure you understand things and putting things in the right place and getting the right content down so that's what helped me um, and I summarized all of that and just kept it in one place and it really helped me 100%, thanks Mohamed uh, Jyoti this question is for you but um... A student wants to know your approach for studying for tests in terms of studying each module. Did you study like four days math and then four days tax uh, before a test or what was your study approach uh, for per module uh, before the test week? Um, oh, should I go ahead? Yeah, you can go ahead, yeah. Okay. So I actually used to do two modules a day because I used to get bored looking at one. So I would maybe spend three days doing math and auditing, then another three days doing tax and accounting. It's again, a very personal choice. You have to decide what works for you. And I, I think the reason I, I always used to, I never did the, the, the sections which are very number intensive. So like I wouldn't have done math and accounting at the same time, because then that's just too many numbers, how your brain works. You need to know what you can take. So that's, I, used, I, I, I do remember doing the split of two modules a day just to keep it fresh. The next question is more, uh, I think, more psychological type of question. So, I mean, we all, I mean, everybody's had sometimes bad results uh, or lower than expected results in a test. And I think we've alluded to it earlier in the discussion today uh, about getting uh, disappointing results. And certainly it's something that we have to face in PGDA. But my question to you is how did you manage those disappointing results or lower than expected results when you actually got them. What was the psychology behind it to get over that disappointment uh, that you had? Maybe Jyoti, while you're here, uh, you can go ahead then Mohammed. So I'm lucky that I never was in a position where I failed 
a test to exam, but there definitely were times where I was disappointed. And I actually, between my second year and third year, that was actually the difficult time for me. I, and that's when I went through a challenging time, just trying to adjust to the workload. And I think it's, it's definitely a mental game. So you need to consider what it is that you need to do for yourself to get yourself back on the horse. And it's, it's like sitting and feeling sorry for yourself is it's never gonna help. It's always about getting yourself back into that frame of mind where you can focus and where you're just gonna take the next step forward. So it's really you working on yourself. It's not about, like no one can help you get back in that zone. So it's, it's definitely the self-motivation which you need to rely on. 100%. Uh, Mohammed? Yeah, I think it's a lot about that as well. Um, for me, it was, I think the worst time was the first test week in, in GDA when I got my results back and I was like, oh my goodness, what in the world? Um, <laughs> what just happened? Um, but again, Mohammed, as you're not alone. Earlier, Mohammed, just by the way, you're not alone there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know it's pretty hectic and you look at your results and you're like oh goodness you're opening what's it sc.uk.z and AC.Z, and you're like oh my goodness what what is this um and i remember sitting in my car because the results came out at like four something p.m and i was like oh goodness is this this what i produced um, even though i worked so hard um you know and and that's that's what you have to to come come to terms with um GDA is difficult and, and don't let people tell you otherwise. Don't let people say it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. You know, again, your success, as I mentioned earlier, is a function of how hard you work. So at that point, I realized, hey, whatever I'm doing is, is not enough. And then I had to step it up. Um, again, you can't cry in a corner and no one's going to feel sorry for you. Um, again, everybody wants to pass. Nobody wants to fail. And Again, no one's going to worry about you. In the end, it's you on your own. You're writing the exam. You're writing the test. So, you know, simply put, you, you're going you're gonna to get these, these situations. You're going to get these times. But what you can do about it is work harder um, and, and get back up and, you know, look in the mirror and say, I can do it. Because that's the only way you're going to get through, through the year. Um, don't feel sorry for yourself. And don't be like, oh, I did badly. This is not for me. No, no, it is for you. You're here in GDA because you were good enough to get out of high school, to get out of your undergrad. And you're now in GDA and you've got seven, eight months and then you're writing the ITC. Think about that. You know, keep the ITC. That's what I did. I mean, I kept the ITC as the goal. And I was like, this is what I'm going to be writing next year um, in Jan. At the end of Jan, I'm writing the ITC. And I kept that going. And whenever something bad happened, I, I, I owned the situation because that's what you have to do. You know, you're an adult, you're not a, not a kid. And you've got to realize that that's how, that's how life is, you know? And remember, you're going to get to work and in the working place, you're going to get shadow on a lot of the time. Uh, you know, sometimes things because you didn't even do it properly or things you didn't do correctly. And that's just the learning process. And you're going to feel bad, but you gotta, you got to suck it up and get it back up, you know, the next day. So think about it like that. You're not, you're not here in this temporary period. It's, it's a whole long marathon um, and you're going to do it in the end. 100%. Um, just another question um, from, from my side. Um, lectures. I know some people do prepare quite, a, quite in some detail for lectures. Some people don't. Some people just read. What was your approach before lecture happened? Was there a lot of detailed reading that happened before that? A lot of uh, prepare time or just mild, mild reading or going fresh and then didn't read anything. What was the approach before lectures? Maybe Mohamed Wiley here first and then Jyoti. Um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the night before the lecture, I would, I would, go, I would go and look at the topic. Um, I wouldn't go into, into extensive detail. Um, I'd go into, say I'd spend two hours, two and a half, three hours on, on the topic uh, the night before. If I still struggle and didn't understand what was going on, then I would go for the lecture the next day. Uh, and I would, I would get a better understanding if I understood what was going on and I felt that, okay, I didn't need to, to go for the lecture, um, then I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't attend the lecture. But, um, I think that was essentially, essentially what, what the approach was, um, on, on, on my side. But yeah, I think again, don't spend too much time if you don't waste time. Uh, and that, that was the big thing for me is not to waste time. hundred percent. Uh, Jyoti, on your side? So you may remember that I was always in lectures, sitting right towards the front. And um, so I was a big believer in lecture attendance. And 
I used to just be there to see what a lecturer thinks about a certain topic. Um, it makes a difference because obviously they're the ones who's going to be setting the test and the exam. And if you were lucky, they were going to give you tips for being the actually being there in the lecture. Um, like Mohammed said, you're not going to spend a lot of time preparing for a lecture, though. Yes, you must do the pre-reading, but you're not going to spend four hours. You rather focus on your TUT, for example, which is due that week, and then spend one hour going through that chapter in as much detail as you can manage. If you're a speed reader, you can probably get through the entire chapter, and you have an understanding of what's going to come out in the lecture. And the lecturer is going to point you out then to something which you wouldn't have noticed, or you're going to think, hey, that's something I would not have noticed by myself, because now you've already gone and read it. So you know what it is that you missed. So it's it's just, you don't have to now remember everything that the lecturer is saying, but you notice exactly what's the important thing that he's saying. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's again, what works for you. I liked attending lectures, yeah. Oh, thanks, thanks for that, Josie. Um, Guys, we have gone slightly over time. Are we okay to go to about four o'clock? I mean, is that doable um, on your side? Both? Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I've got one question from the students. Uh, what were your working experiences like after studying? Uh, did it get better once postgrad was done? Um, they're saying that they did see a lot of trainees complaining online that they wish they could go back to, to studying. Um, <laughs> anybody, uh, maybe Mohammed first and then Jyoti? Yeah, um, I think once IDC was over, I was like, wow, this is this is awesome. I don't have to <laughs> to work like an animal every single day. But like, again, the work just moves from one medium to another. Um, again, you were studying a lot of the time in your first in your first year. You don't get that studying. You don't need to do that, that studying that you did in GDA. Um, but then it starts again in your second year when you're, you know, in APC. So for me, it got a lot easier, but, you know, the areas I worked in after, after GDA was, was, was were quite extensive um, and they were very, very, very hectic and I worked long hours and, and stuff, but it was never about complaining. I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing uh, this course, you chose it for a reason, right? Otherwise you wouldn't be, you wouldn't choose GDA, you know, no one would make the choice of doing GDA just for the sake of it. You're doing it because you want it, right? So and again, you know, things get tough, things get hectic, but, you know, there's always the light at the end of the tunnel. It's those four letters, right? C-A-S-A. -S -A. And when you're done IPC, it is the greatest feeling. I can tell you this now. It is the greatest feeling ever. Um, you know, all those years of hard work have finally paid off. And, and that's what you gotta, you got to keep, you know, you know, at the top of your head and say, okay, I'm doing all this because it's going to pay off one day. Um, and yeah, it gets very easy um, at times and it gets very difficult at times. But again, that's life and you just got to get through it. But overall, experience has been amazing and articles are really fun. You know, the networking, the connections, the people, um, adding the person I was in GDA to the person I am now to different people. Um, I'm a lot, a lot different, a lot more uh, molded technically, you know, professionally. Um, and those are important skills that you need. It's not only your, your technical competence, but it's also those soft skills that you pick up along the way, which I think um, are quite important. So yeah, um, it's been amazing. Thanks, thanks, Mohamed. Jyoti, on your side, work experience? So I loved my articles. Um, it was a, a wonderful experience and you, you grow a lot. So when you're first this clueless deer in the headlights, first year and who you come out as a third year, they're not the same person. And it's like you, like you develop so much confidence. You can interact with a CFO, a CEO, the, the, and like, I mean, any kind of CEO, like um, the, the global CEO, for example, of Deloitte. Like literally the conference which you get, it's unparalleled. And I think the, the kind of training which we get in South Africa, even after going um, um, to London for a bit, it's just, we get excellent training. So yes, I can, it is difficult. Yes, the hours are long, but what South African chartered accountants go to through to get the qualification is just so much more than what happens overseas that, that that's really why we're considered the best and why it's we have so much mobility. It's it's the training that we go through. I have just one more question for you, Jyoti, um, from one of the students. Um, she says, how did you manage two modules? You say you did two modules a day. How did you manage that? Uh, while attending uh, lectures and tutorials, um, given that you were there before the pandemic started. Um, so how did you split, split your time, I guess, between the two, uh, two modules that you're studying per day? 
So um, I think with anything in life, time management is essential. So I am the person who was not on social media. I am the person who would switch off WhatsApp and not speak to someone. If, if there's no reason to be out there, I would be at my books. So it was, I think, if I, for example, spend two hours on a certain subject, then two hours on the TAT for that day, and then in the evening focus on my prepared readings or or creating, just going through a new section or creating a summary, whatever it was, I wouldn't be doing accounting the whole day because I would just be too bored. So you need to consider what you're doing that day and, and stick to a plan. So I, for example, would start the day off saying two hours on this, lectures are this, then there's a two hour gap, I need to do this when in the library. And then it's my tat, and then I'm back home and it's gonna be an hour and a half on this, then I'll go eat and then maybe another hour on that. So start your day with a plan and hold yourself accountable to that. There's more than enough hours in a day to, to get what you need done. 100%, thanks. I still got one final question for our panelists today. And this is more soft, I would say, because it's dealing with something that Jyoti spoke of immediately, I think, when she started was about diet and, and food. Um, is there any specific diet that uh, any of you were on, uh, you thought or felt that would improve your performance uh, academically uh, in the year or anything that you can recommend to our students for them to assist themselves in terms of performing? Uh, Jyoti, while your mic is open, you can, you can talk. Um, so... I wouldn't say there was a specific diet that I tried to have. I think we all know what is healthy in terms of five a day, fruits and vegetables, stay away from junk and fast food. Um, it's those basic things and being hydrated and stuff. But um, my mom did have a, um, she thinks that fish is very good for um thinking and stuff so she did feed me a lot of fish that was not my choice and I wouldn't be able to tell you if it made a difference um yeah and if you feel like you need supplementation like omega-3 and 6s or multivitamin you should feel free to, to go for it I mean you want to be in your best shape your best that's shape. interesting because I mean fish that there is definitely some evidence showing that fish has a positive effect in terms of omega-3 and 6 on the brain um uh, and you know yeah, I was completely opposite. Um, although I did, did exercise and stuff, but I told myself, I'm not going to let GDA take all the happiness away from me. So I basically went in and I had as much junk as I did. I was very unhealthy in that entire year. Like my entire university career, I was really, really unhealthy. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, yeah, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you got to know what strikes best for you. Um, for me, having McDonald's like two, three times a week, and you know eating as as junky as possible um it was okay for me and yeah those junk foods made me happy and yeah at the same time I still exercise and so I feel like it balanced out but I'm not sure I think now I've changed my diet but at that time um I was very very junk food driven um, definitely can't yeah. eat McDonald's forever yeah we can't, you can't eat McDonald's forever eh? <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. if I want to cut my lifespan out I, I would but yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, thanks. Uh, okay. I think, guys, we've, we've reached almost our uh, time limit. I think we're close to, to four o'clock. So um, I don't know if there's anything final from uh, Jyoti and Mohamed's side that you want to say uh, to the students. Um, we're hoping to hope you can have another session just before the exam happens in um, September. Uh, but definitely, is there anything finally, maybe Mohamed, while the mic is open, anything you want to say to our students or message you want to give? Yeah, I think there's, there's a quote that was, was very close to me in that year. Uh, it was, I think, from Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't run, then you go, or some of those effects, like if you can't run, uh, if you can't crawl, then anyway, if you can't run, then walk, if you can't walk, then crawl. If you can't crawl, then do something as long as you keep moving forward. Um, and essentially what that, that, that pushed me on by saying that, hey, every single time, no matter how bad things get, and yes, things are going to get crazy in GDA and you're going to feel sad. You're going to feel like this is not for me. I don't want to do this anymore just always remember what the end goal is. And you've come this far. You've got a few more months to go. Um, and I mean, it looks, it looks like, ah, he's sitting on the other side and he's done it and whatever. But yes, he's done it. And again, it wasn't an easy journey. It, and, and it's not easy for everybody. Um, so 
keep at it, keep pushing, and remember that you will get there at the end. Um, just got to believe in yourself because if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. Um, tell yourself that every morning, every day, you know, that you can do it and you will do it. Uh, work hard. Whatever's wrong, you know, get it sorted out, understand, learn, um, you know, be a sponge in this year. And, and, and put, all, put all partying and, you know, going out, all that stuff aside. It's just six or seven months. You can do that in your articles. <laughs> Trust me, articles are fun. Um, but but in, in GDA, don't do it. No, put away, put it all aside. If you have friends, tell them, nope, I'm not going out this weekend. I've got work to do. Um, it's all those small things that can't. Um, save time, work hard. Um, and yeah, you will, you will pass to the end. So yeah, good luck. And um, I hope to see you all. Uh, right, the ITC next year. Thanks, Mohammed, for that. We appreciate it. Jyoti and Yase, any final words for our students? Um, I think what I really focused on um, in GDA, in addition to like all the studying and stuff, is focus on being happy. It's not a year to be miserable or get yourself down. It's just go through the year and try and also like develop that joy in yourself that you're doing something really good for your life. And it was one of like it's not the worst year of my life, but it definitely like in the top five. It was a wonderful year. And um, I loved tutoring. Like, I loved speaking to my lecturers. I have such good memories of some of my TAT classes and stuff. So like, don't go into something and like drag yourself there. It's like an amazing opportunity and just develop that kind of happiness in yourself because it's a skill you're gonna need like, for the rest of your life. Don't be miserable. Don't let yourself get down. Um, yeah. So like I have, yeah, it was a wonderful year for me. So, yeah. Thanks, thanks Jyoti for that. Um, so I think we reached our time limit, everybody. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the session and we found this useful. Uh, I'm gonna thank once again, Mohammed Mansour from uh, Standard Bank for being here, Jyoti from SA Home Loans for being here as well. We really enjoyed uh, the session. I think the interaction was great. I think the, I think the, the wisdom that I think some of our students took away from you and your personal experiences really did help them. I'm um, getting some positive feedback as well from, from students here on this, on, on my personal messaging. So that's very good. Um, hopefully we can have another session uh, before the final exam, um, which is probably in October. Um, so Mohammed and Jyoti, we might be calling you again. <laughs> this might not be your final time. Uh, one more session uh, for one hour or something. So thank you very much. Everybody take care. Have a good evening and goodbye. Thanks guys.